Thank you so much for welcoming me and Christian and our delegation back to Ukraine. It is wonderful to be here uh, in your beautiful city of Kyiv. It is important for me to be here in person to show Canada's solidarity with Ukrainians as they continue their courageous fight for their democracy. Les Ukrainiens défendent leur pays, mais ils défendent aussi les valeurs de tous ceux qui croient dans la souveraineté et la liberté. As I've said many times, Canada will continue to stand with Ukraine with whatever it takes, as long as it takes. Since last year, we've committed over $8 billion in funding assistance to Ukraine, including over $1 billion in military aid. In addition, our spring budget extended a $2.45 billion loan to the government of Ukraine for this year with the aim of supporting Ukraine's recovery and reconstruction. Today, I can announce that we will provide $500 million in new funding for military assistance. Aujourd'hui, j'annonce qu'on va fournir 500 millions de dollars en nouvelle aide militaire à l'Ukraine. Ce nouveau soutien s'ajoute à ce qu'on fait depuis des années pour aider les Ukrainiens à défendre leur souveraineté et leur intégrité territoriale. Depuis 2015, avec l'opération Unifiée, on a formé 36 000 membres des forces armées ukrainiennes. Et aujourd'hui, j'annonce qu'on va prolonger l'opération Unifiée un an de plus jusqu'en 2026. In addition, today I'm announcing that Canada will be part of the multinational efforts to train fighter pilots and to maintain and support Ukraine's fighter jet program leveraging Canadian expertise in these areas. We will also be contributing to the multinational Leopard Tank Maintenance Initiative. We will provide an additional 288 AIM-7 missiles, which will support Ukraine in its efforts to defend Ukrainian skies. And from existing funds, we will provide 10,000 rounds of 105 millimeter ammunition to the Ukraine security forces. While we provide military aid, we also take strong actions on sanctions and on economic measures. Canada was the first G7 country to pass legislation allowing us to pursue the seizure and forfeiture of sanctioned Russian assets. Last spring, a Russian-owned Antonov 124 cargo aircraft landed at Pearson Airport in Toronto. As soon as it landed, we immediately grounded it. People in Toronto know this because they've seen it while driving past the airport as we've held it there for the entirety of the past year. So today, because of legislation we passed, we are now seizing this Russian-controlled, Russian-owned aircraft. And we're beginning the process to forfeit this asset to Ukraine to make sure it will never again be used by Russia to support them or their war. On top of this, we're announcing new sanctions. So far, Canada has imposed sanctions on more than 2,500 entities and individuals. And today, I'm announcing we'll impose new sanctions against 24 individuals and 17 entities as part of the Special Economic Measures Ukraine regulations. We've all seen the devastation caused by the collapse of the dam at the Kakova hydroelectric power plant in Kherson region this week. This was a direct consequence of Russia's war. And it is devastating for thousands upon thousands of people. To help with the response today, I'm announcing $10 million in new funding and will be redirecting $37.5 million of Canada's currently allocated humanitarian assistance for Ukraine to respond to this flood. Quand on voit autant de destruction, nos pensées doivent toujours rester avec les gens qui subissent cette violence. Les soldats qui combattent aux différents fronts, les familles qui quittent leur chez-soi et qui perdent des proches, les enfants qui sont témoins de cette violence incroyable, les étudiants qui ne savent pas ce que leur avenir leur réserve. Les Ukrainiens sont courageux et résilients, mais ils ont aussi besoin de soutien. In December 2022, Ukraine launched a national program of mental health and psychosocial support 
led by First Lady Olenia Zelenska. This program aims to help citizens overcome war-related stress and the consequences of experienced traumatic events. Canada recognizes how important support for mental health will be to Ukraine, and that's why we're also here to help. We will fund projects that focus on the well-being and mental health of Ukrainians, including children, teachers, and medical personnel. Volodymyr, thank you again for your welcome today. You and the Ukrainian people are an inspiration to Canada, to Canadians, and to the world. This is a consequential moment for Ukraine, but it also is a consequential moment for the world. You're fighting for your country and for values like democracy, freedom, respect, and dignity. But in fighting for Ukraine, you're also fighting for the future of us all. Canada will continue to stand shoulder to shoulder with Ukraine, and so will democracies around the world. Thank you, my friend, for all that you do. Thank you, Justin. Thank you so much. Дякую, шановні колеги. Ваші запитання, будь ласка, ми почнемо з Global News. The time, Mr. President. Hello, Mr. Prime Minister. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, if we could start with you. You're obviously outlining a, a number of new measures today and talking about the importance of, of prevention and security. But Canada still hasn't met the NATO member target of 2% GDP for defense spending. So really, what example is Canada setting on the world stage? Canada is the sixth, larger, uh, is sixth largest in NATO. Uh, by defense spending, and we have consistently stepped up and will continue to all over the world uh, as Canadian soldiers, as Canadian troops uh, are part of uh, you know, really important missions um, in many places around the world. At the same time, we recognize that there is more to do, which is why uh, we are stepping up with the purchase of 88 F-35s uh, to modernize our fighter jet fleet. Uh, where we've increased by about 70% over the past years our investments in, uh, in uh, military equipment and uh, military in general. And we will continue to recognize that uh, the world has changed over the past years. The aggression with which Russia has chosen to try and redraw maps on the world, the pressure that authoritarian governments are putting on democracies and on the economic resilience of the world, uh, means that we are going to have to continue uh, to step up and do our share and, as Canadians, more than our share uh, in keeping the world safe. And we will always do that. Le Canada demeure le sixième plus grand pays en termes d'investissement en matière de sécurité de l'OTAN. On a investi au courant des dernières années énormément d'argent et dans les années à venir, uh, pour moderniser et arriver avec de nouveaux équipements pour uh, nos forces armées, incluant uh, des, des investissements pour 88 uh, nouveaux uh, avions de chasse, des F-35, uh, incluant une augmentation de 70 de nos investissements en défense uh, au cours uh, des années dans lesquelles on est. Mais nous reconnaissons qu'il y a plus à faire parce que le monde est rendu de plus en plus dangereux. Uh, nous allons continuer avec notre présence uh, à travers le monde, avec uh, la fiabilité des soldats canadiens, uh, et on va continuer de regarder comment on peut contribuer encore plus à la sécurité à un moment où les pays autoritaires, où les menaces économiques uh, et humanitaires augmentent un peu partout à travers le monde.